Thanks for listening to the Let's Think Show. This is Shepard, and today I would like to chat about finding a compromise for the folks that are into various forms of Marxism, socialism, uh, progressive socialism, uh, communism, uh, liberalism, uh, not classical liberalism, but but uh, the contemporary liberalism, and uh, capitalism, free market capitalism. And these two groups, the, uh, I'll call it uh, Marxism or, or socialism, I don't know which, so socialism is used more, but it's it's actually not quite as accurate, I don't think, as Marxism. So we'll use Marxism, and then on the other side, capitalism. Uh, and I don't know if there can be a compromise, but I'm going to suggest one uh, after we first take just a few minutes to make sure that I'm using words correctly, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to use the wrong words or, or convey the wrong meaning. So I want to make sure we're on the same page. So a a capitalist, a free market capitalist, is a person who believes that human beings exist in the world, and then we all walk out in the morning and uh, we see the world out in front of us, and and most of us want to eat food and have shelter over our head, and and we have other wants and needs, and we set about using the abilities that we have, the the IQ we were born with, the height the muscles, the uh, the drive, all of these things, we set about to create a good life uh, to meet our values. And, and the capitalist usually believes, most capitalists, that different people have different values, and values are subjective. So some people's highest value is providing food and love for the people they love. Other people's highest value is money. Other people's highest value is honesty or seeking truth. And so there are hundreds of possible values, and most of us have a combination of those. And most of us choose different ones to be our highest values. I don't know if you can hear it on this recording, but I am so enjoying my back deck. It's a bit after 6 a.m. I'm listening to the cattle in the field mooing. The magpies are chirping. There's some other bird chirping as well. The sprinklers are going. Sorry for that little side note, but gosh, it's good to be alive. Getting back now to values being subjective. Uh, one of the values I have, just as an example, is non-aggression principle. This idea that uh, I will... I will not aggress against others. I will not initiate violence. And I extend that to be violence against property. I won't break your stuff or or steal it from you or or anything like that. So that's a high value of mine. And I have a, a, a number of friends who don't really hold that value. Uh, and their values are, or their probably highest value, would be feeling good about doing good for others. and and wanting everyone to share their stuff with others so that everybody can have at least a little bit of something. And this is not socialism at all. Um, socialism is the idea that you have to do that. And these people, uh, you know, most of my friends wouldn't say that you should use force to, to force people to share their stuff, but that is a high value of theirs. And so the capitalist goes out and says, okay, why don't you go out and seek your highest values and try to make those happen? I'm going to do the same with mine, and let's not hurt each other. Let's just go get that done. I'm not going to tell you how to live or, or how to get your your things to come to fruition. As long as you're not messing with me or messing with other folks, you can go out and, and do what you want. And that's kind of the, the free market capitalist uh, attitude. Now, I want to make sure that we're not thinking of a, a a subgroup of capitalism that I, I don't think most philosophers agree with or like or condone or support. And that is the mixture of government with capitalism. And so this would be if corporations are getting welfare, 
if corporations are being protected by the government, they can do whatever they want. If they are being treated differently than other people, if you know they're getting special treatment, um, this is crony capitalism, and it is a form, um, but it, it's kind of it, kind of the opposite of capitalism. Um, I, I don't know how to better describe it, but unfortunately. The government has mixed itself with business and business with government, sometimes out of survival mentality uh, in the United States, especially over the last 75 years. Uh, and, and it's happened throughout all time, I'm sure. But this has happened more and more. And then many people say, well, the CEO is is treated differently than the worker. And he's taxed differently, and, and all of these things are, are, are different, and it's unfair. Well, I don't know of any capitalist. I'm sure there could be some. Uh, perhaps they're members of political parties, but, but real intellectuals, real capitalists, would not agree that anybody should be treated differently than other people. So I, I just wanted to kind of make that distinction that crony capitalism is, is – I don't know anybody that supports it. I certainly don't. I support free market capitalism. Okay, so what then, if, if I've given a brief description of what capitalism is, uh, let's talk about Marxism. And Marx also believed that, uh, as I understand him, that we would all get up in the morning, we go out, and we seek to fulfill our values. However, people are kind of dumb and can't make their own choices, and so there should be an elite ruling class that leads everyone else and decides what is best for them. And that elite ruling class would use violence or force or coercion or, or whatever we want to call it to take away money from the people who produce money or goods. You know, if this was in the time of a farmer was going out and and getting a lot of hay out of the field, then that would be, you know, hay that was taken from that farmer and not actual cash. <laughs> but in, in today's world, uh, we think of it as money or, or as cash. Um, so the socialists would say that uh, the ruling class should decide what minimum standards of human existence are and that no human being should starve to death. No human being should... Uh, not be able to afford things like education or entertainment or uh, health care or water or food or other things. And this is not up to me to decide. This would be up to the ruling class to decide what it is that everybody has a right to. And then this ruling class would go out and decide how to take away what the producers have produced and divvy it up among the people who have, uh, not the people who have voted for them, but the people, well, I guess sometimes it is a case, but th to divvy up among the people who didn't go out and earn those things. And so at, at face value, we would look at socialism and or Marxism, and we would look at capitalism, and we would say, well, these are absolute opposites. One says that we shouldn't steal and use violence to to get what we want, which might be everybody to have the exact same amount of things or, or closer to the same amount or a, a basic foundation uh, of stuff. Uh, one says it's okay to use violence to do that. And the other says, no, you need to go out and do that yourself. And I guess the compromise that I am suggesting, and oh my gosh, I'm going to get beat up by both sides here. I think I, I hope that you are not dogmatic about this. I hope that you haven't concretely decided that you absolutely hate any idea other than what you've you've heard so far and i'm hoping maybe that we can come to a a compromise as we move forward um socialism is on such a huge decline there are a few loud squawking voices um and then capitalism oh my gosh these people have been beat up for so long and by the by the minority who uh, who, you know, this opinion isn't the majority opinion, but uh, they've been beat up. So so we have these two groups that are, are kind of in trouble. The state of nature is that one of them is going to come out on top in the end. But what is the compromise that I'm thinking? Well, my thought would be, let's give the capitalists 
what they want. Let's say that you may go out and work as hard as you want to. You may amass as much wealth as you want. And I will do the same. And once you have amassed that wealth, you get to do with it whatever you want. And I'm not going to steal it from you. I'm not going to shame you or, or what do they call it? Cancel a person. I'm not going to cancel you because you choose to do something that is different. I've been wrong so many times in my life. Uh, now, as a business person, uh, I have a special interest in capitalism. Or maybe being a business person has made me appreciate it more. Maybe my decision to be a capitalist has led me to be a business person. But in business, you have to make a lot of right decisions. And you're not going to be successful if you don't. And so I have been fortunate enough to make a lot of good decisions and to be successful in business. And so I think my uh, probability of being right about things is higher than, uh, say, somebody that's, oh, I don't know, a, a bottom level uh, of the workforce, maybe a, a, a McDonald's worker or um, a politician or, or someone that, that it doesn't really matter what they do, they're still going to get paid at the end of the day. Um, they don't have to produce at a high level and, and they don't have a lot of competition um, that kind of thing. So I, even though I maybe egotistically, maybe I'm being a little pompous here, but even though I think I'm right a lot, maybe 80% of the time, my, my, being wrong 20% of the time is a lot. I am wrong about a lot of things a lot of times. And so the idea that I would, I would want to tell someone else, hey, I'm pretty sure because I have an 80% uh, likelihood of being right here. Um, I think I'm going to use force to make you do what I want. That would be ludicrous, uh, even for a, a successful business person, much less a, a person who is kind of, you know, lives on the fringes and, and is part of, you know, part of the ruling class. Uh, they certainly wouldn't be able to do that. So how about for the capitalist? What the capitalist gets out of this compromise is go out, do what you want to do. Build up your wealth. If you think that's what's going to make you happy, you build that up. You do with it what you want. We're not going to steal it from you. Give it to your kids. We're not going to steal a hunk of it then. Um, go out and do your thing. So then what do the socialists get out of this? Well, I'm thinking that the capitalists should be, gosh, I hate the, the word force, but maybe they should be forced to respect the Marxist idea of, hey, here are a group of people that all want to pool their resources, or at least share enough that everybody in their group has a bare minimum. And this group is allowed to do what they want. And the, the capitalists should not be able to force them to think differently. So if a, a group or if a person wants to join this group of Marxist and says, hey, I'm tired of being a wage laborer, I am going to join this other group and we are all going to pool our resources or we're going to pay higher uh, taxes. I, I believe that's the term that is often used in Marxism for when you take things from people against their will. But in that case, it wouldn't be against their will. It wouldn't really be taxes It would because it wouldn't be against their will. It wouldn't be theft. It would just be pooling either all of their money or a portion of their money and then making sure everybody has a certain amount, and then they go out and they live life. And I don't think the capitalists should try to stop them from that. And, you know, I'm even thinking that maybe it would be, and I don't think most Marxists want everybody to have exactly the same amount of money. It, it would be kind of silly if if somebody goes out and wants to work 80 hours because they want to have a shiny new boat and the person next door says, I'd rather spend time with family and friends drinking water in the backyard and, and playing chess. Um, so I'm going to work 30 hours this week. Then I, I think, obviously, the, the person who worked 80 hours shouldn't deserve the strong family ties and the good friendships. Well, no, they didn't earn that. The other person earned that. And the person who worked the extra 50 hours that week, uh, who wanted the boat, 
Well, that's their boat. <laughs> and a portion of the boat or a timeshare of the boat certainly doesn't belong to the other person. Uh, that wouldn't be fair at all. So let's think for a moment. Is this a good compromise? As, as we ponder this possible compromise, you know, I, I kind of I think about a, a possible argument or problem. Uh, something that I think people might argue. I think this might be something that the Marxist would argue. And, and they might say that, well, if we had this compromise, this peace offering, if we did this, then all of the people who produce the most stuff would not want it taken from them, and they would go and join the the capitalist group, and then the only people left in the Marxist group would be people who don't produce, that are on net receivers of the commune's goods rather than contributors to the commune's goods. And so then the argument might be that that is unfair and uh, it just it wouldn't work. And I, I guess I guess I have to, if I'm going to be fair and objective here, I have to say maybe that that wouldn't work if you didn't. Maybe that's why. The, the violence idea, this, this stealing from others idea and this forcing others to do things, maybe that's why that's such an important part of Marxism. Maybe, yeah, I, I, sometimes I have to admit that maybe I was wrong. Maybe that is, maybe that is the case. Maybe that, maybe it wouldn't work. Maybe the compromise wouldn't work. I don't know. I have hope for humanity. I want it to work. Um, I, I don't know that it's, <laughs> that it would or is going to, but, it seems like a, a good option. And maybe if the the group was big enough, I, I don't see any reason why it would have to be a, a geographically based group or a small group. Like, I think if the group was big enough, if we took 7 billion plus people in the world and each person got to choose, hey, do I want to be part of the capitalist club or do I want to be part of the Marxist club? And then they could go forward and, and do what they wanted to do. Um, I, I think that could work. And even if it was only one billion to six billion on, on either side, that seems to me that that would be a, a just fine thing. It w the two groups wouldn't have to be equal in size. I think it would be interesting to see. It might teach capitalists a lesson. Let's say that this started out and only a billion people wanted to be Marxists. And six billion wanted to be capitalists, and then they got going in this, and these six billion capitalists are realizing, hey, this is really hard work going out and being productive and and carrying our own weight and building wealth and this is a lot of long, hard hours. This isn't a good way to live. Look at how these socialists have it, and maybe the socialist society would thrive. Maybe they would be inventing medicines and different forms of transportation that we haven't even thought of yet and and all the technology that, that could be invented and maybe it would be different history has shown that it's kind of been the whole capitalist system that has has brought about all that positive change but maybe that would change so then if this compromise happened wouldn't that be a wonderful way to defeat capitalism to simply go out and form a co-op or form unions or whatever form the, the socialist group or the, the Marxist group, whatever we want to call them. I keep using those kind of interchangeably, but that's not really fair. Not all Marxists are socialists. And let's see who's happiest. Let's see how, how humanity goes. Is there more wealth? Is there more happiness and health and love and, and goodness? I think we want those things. I, I'm not saying you need to, but I think most people, you know, 80, 90, 95, 99 percent of people, they just want to get up in the morning, have a good breakfast or in my case, a good cup of coffee with some creamer. And they want to go out and uh, produce things of value and they want to 
be around some other people sometimes and, and have good positive relationships with them and smile and laugh. And they want to learn and grow and stretch their brains and hopefully stretch their bodies and their muscles. And they want to get together again in the evening with more friends or family and spend time and relax and think and just have joyous day after day after day for 50 or 60 or 70 years or gosh, over the last, whatever has been happening is incredible. I, I live in the United States and over the last hundred years or so, there's just been this huge increase in leisure time and wealth and, and for all classes from the, from the top to the bottom. And maybe this is what we all want is this joyous life, listening to sprinklers in the morning while sipping coffee. I don't know, friends, neighbors. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, I just hope that a compromise, I, I hope that there can be a, a tolerance. I hope that there can be, uh, we can reimagine living with people who might not want to live according to our personal dictates, whether that is you've got to work 80 hours a week or uh, you can't work that much or you, you I'm going to steal your money or that kind of thing. Hopefully we can learn to just live together in peace, caring about each other, being kind, being good neighbors. Are you up for giving that a shot? I know that I am. <laughs>